Story time. It's story time with Study Coach, and my name is Morel Bernard. And you will also find more stories for children on Study Coach Podcast. That is Study Coach Podcast, where you will find more stories for children. This particular story is called Effie, Harry, and the Dragons. That's Effie, Harry, and the Dragons. Let's go. It all began with Effie's getting something in her eye. It hurt very much indeed. And it felt something like a red hot spark. Only it seemed to have legs as well and wings like a fly. Effie rubbed and cried. Not real crying, but the kind your eyes does all by itself without your being miserable inside your mind. And then she went to her father to have the thing in her eye taken out. Effie's father was a doctor, so of course he knew how to take things out of eyes. He did it very cleverly with a soft paintbrush dipped in castor oil. When he had gotten the thing out, he said, This is very curious. Effie had often got things in her eye before, and her father had always seemed to think it was natural, rather tiresome and naughty perhaps, but still natural. He had never before thought it curious. Effie stood holding her handkerchief to her eye and said, I don't believe it's out. People always say this when they have something in their eyes. Oh yes, it's out, said the doctor. Here it is, on the brush. This is very interesting. Effie had never heard her father say that about anything that she had any share in. She said, what? The doctor carried the brush very carefully across the room and held the point of it under his microscope. Then he twisted the brass screws of the microscope and looked through the top with one eye. Dear me, he said. Dear, dear me. Four well-developed limbs, a long caudal appendage, five toes unequal in lengths, almost like one of the lacidite, yet there are traces of wings. The creature under his eye wriggled a little in the castor oil, and he went on, yes, A bat-like wing. A new specimen, undoubtedly. Effie, run round to the professor and ask him to be kind enough to step in for a few minutes. You might give me sixpence, Daddy, said Effie, because I did bring you the new specimen. I took great care of it inside my eye, and my eye does hurt. The doctor was so pleased with the new specimen that he gave Effie a shilling. And presently the professor stepped round. He stayed to lunch and he and the doctor quarrelled very happily all the afternoon about the name and the family of the thing that had come out of Effie's eye. But at tea time another thing happened. Effie's brother, Harry, fished something out of his tea, which he thought at first was an earwig. He was just getting ready to drop it on the floor and end its life in the usual way when it it shook itself in the spoon, spread two wet wings and flopped onto the tablecloth. There it sat stroking itself with its feet and stretching its wings. And Harry said, Why? It's a tiny newt. The professor leaned forward before the doctor could say a word. 
"I'll give you half a crown for it, Harry, my lad," he said, speaking very fast. And then he picked it up carefully on his handkerchief. "It is a new specimen," he said, "and finer than yours, Doctor." It was. A tiny lizard, about half an inch long, with scales and wings. So now, the doctor and the professor each had a specimen, and they were both very pleased. But before long, these specimens began to seem less valuable. For the next morning, when the knife boy was cleaning the doctor's boots. He suddenly dropped the brushes and the boot and the blacking and screamed out that he was burnt. And from inside the boot came crawling a lizard as big as a kitten, with large, shining wings. Why? Said Effie. I know what it is. It is a dragon, like the one Saint George killed. And Effie was right. That afternoon, Towser was bitten in the garden by a dragon about the size of a rabbit, which he had tried to chase. And the next morning, all the papers were full of the wonderful winged lizards that were appearing all over the country. The papers would not call them dragons because, of course. No one believes in dragons nowadays, and at any rate, the papers were not going to be so silly as to believe in fairy stories. At first, there were only a few, but in a week or two, the country was simply running alive with dragons of all sizes, and in the air, you could sometimes see them as thick as a swarm of bees. They all looked alike, except as to size. They were green, with scales, and they had four legs and a long tail and great wings like bats' wings. Only the wings were a pale, half-transparent yellow, like the gear boxes on bicycles. They breathe a fire and smoke, as all proper dragons must. But still, the newspaper went on pretending they were lizards, until the editor of the Standard was picked up and carried away by a very large one. And then the other newspaper people had not anyone left to tell them what they ought not to believe. So when the largest elephant in the zoo was carried off by a dragon. The papers gave up pretending, and put "alarming plague of dragons" at the top of the paper. You have no idea how alarming it was, and at the same time, how aggravating. The large-sized dragons were terrible, certainly. But when once you had found out that the dragons always went to bed early, because they were afraid of the chill night air, you had only to stay indoors all day, and you were pretty safe from the big ones. But the smaller sizes were a perfect nuisance. The ones as big as earwigs got in the soap, and they got in the butter. The ones as big as dogs got in the bath, and the fire and smoke inside them made them steam like anything when the cold water tap was turned on, so that careless people were often scalded quite severely. The ones that were as large as pigeons would get into the workbasket or corner drawers and bite you when you were in a hurry to get a needle or a handkerchief. The ones as big as sheep were easier to avoid because you could see them coming, but when they flew in at the windows and curled up under your eiderdown, and you did not find them till you went to bed, it was always a shock. The ones this size 
did not eat people, only lettuce. But they always scorch the sheets and pillowcases dreadfully. Of course, the county council and the police did everything that could be done. It was no use offering the hand of the princess to anyone who killed the dragon. This was way all very olden times when there was only one dragon and one princess. But now there were far more dragons than princesses, although the royal family was a large one. And besides, it would have been a mere waste of princesses to offer rewards for killing dragons because everybody killed as many dragons as they could quite out of their own heads and without rewards at all, just to get the nasty things out of the way. The county council undertook to cremate all dragons delivered at their offices between the hours of ten and two, and whole wagon loads and cart loads and truck loads of dead dragons could be seen any day of the week standing in a long line in the street where the county council had their offices. Boys brought barrel loads of dead dragons and children on their way home from morning school would call in to leave a handful or two of little dragons they had brought in their satchels or carried in their knotted pocket handkerchiefs. And yet there seemed to be as many dragons as ever. Then... The police stuck up great wood and canvas towers covered with paint and glue. When the dragons flew against these towers, they stuck fast, as flies and wasps do on the sticky papers in the kitchen. And when the towers were covered all over with dragons, the police inspector used to set fire to the towers and burned them and dragons and all. And yet, there seemed to be more dragons than ever. The shops were full of paint and dragon poison and anti-dragon soap and dragon-proof curtains for the windows. And indeed, everything that could be done was done. And yet, there seemed to be more dragons than ever. This is... Episode 1 of Effie, Harry and the Dragons with me, Morel Bernard. You must listen to the next episode. Listen to the next episode to find out what happened with Effie, Harry and the Dragons. So, see so you listen to the next episode. Okay, bye-bye for now.